take off and you'll be in the fence uh, before you know it. So it's just, you, this is one of those places that I think you've got to race the racetrack all day. You can't, you get caught up with racing the guys around you and get frustrated with someone else and get into kind of a, uh, you know, get into a heated match with someone where you're kind of, you know, leaning on each other, beating and banging, you're done. You're going to be wrecked and uh, you won't have a shot at winning this thing. By the way, how, how, how old are you? How old are you? Nine years old, 17 minutes to carry the two. Mate. Okay, you were born the last time this track was paved. It was last paved in 2008. So that gives you an idea about it. Um, any questions? I haven't even been paying attention. We got anybody? I, while we're getting that, you mentioned racing the racetrack. We hear drivers here at Darlington say that all the time. You kind of touched on it. Kind of expand on how difficult is it when you know you got a good race car, but you, you, you just can't lean on the tires too much early on. Yeah, I mean, it's one of the most challenging things as a driver, and I think that this is one of, if, if you can figure out kind of how to get around this place and how to how to manage this racetrack, it says a lot about you as, as a maturity as a driver. So, um, you know, this is just a, a day where it's hard to manufacture finishes, you know. It's like if you have a bad pit stop and get mired back in traffic, it's going to be tough to overcome. So really, this is one of the racetracks where, I, in my opinion, it takes the whole thing. You know, this is where it shows as a team who, where you're at because, if you can if you can check all the boxes and do everything right, you're gonna have a good day. But if one part of your race team isn't isn't on point, driver included, it's gonna be a bad day. So uh, we're we're you know I think ready for that, and we're up to the challenge. And I think that uh, these you can have a good day at Darlington. You walk away with a huge smile on your face because it's it's you know a pretty fun racetrack. It's just uh, it can be very demanding and eat you alive kind of. All right, first question right down here. How's it going, Ryan? Alex? Check right, um, is it on? I'll speak loud. <laughs> Go ahead, it's on. Uh, okay, uh, thanks for coming, firstly. Uh, and I see you got the Xerox hat, you got the paint scheme. How long was all of it in the works and where'd you get the hat? Was that an eBay purchase or? Yeah, uh, so it's, it was in the works for a while, yeah. I mean, I think when, when you know, this, this thing has taken on uh, life of its own, the throwback weekend, you know, and every team's being a part of it. Um, and, you know, when you're when you're talking about running someone else's paint scheme, it, there's approvals, you gotta talk to the race team, you gotta talk to, just get it okay, you know? And then obviously I have a great sponsor with Lily Diabetes. Uh, and so we've gotta, you know, kind of run it up the run it up the chain with them. Um, but it turned out so good. And uh, yeah, so my mom actually got this Xerox hat for me. Um, I, had a, I had a Roush racing hat that I was wearing yesterday, but this thing's pretty sweet. I mean, she, uh, there's a guy, um, uh, that actually works on uh, one of the race teams, and he, he has a ton of old school NASCAR memorabilia, and so uh, Trent bought it from him, and so I, I was I was happy that he was willing to let it go because this is a, a sick hat, and I think it's uh, I mean honestly just to find something like this is is pretty cool. Whether I was racing this car or not, this is something that I would like to have in my collection. Isn't it a good thing that the times change? Because even though it's great to pull these hats out, I mean that that thing's high. That's yeah, I, would, one, yeah. I would don't think that. I mean, first of all, I don't think that I look good in this. Let's just get that clear. I don't. Uh, no, what I, I don't think I'd wear this every day. Like, I think Blaney, my teammate uh, Ricky Senhouse, they, they're all about it. They wear these every day. This is just kind of part of their style. I don't feel like I can pull it off that well. But on Throwback Weekend, I feel like you fit in. Yeah, you do. Like, yeah. It's like Halloween. You know, when you dress up, you feel normal. It's all good. But then if you were dressed like that on, you know, January first, people would be like, "What are you doing?" Got another question? Yes, ma'am. How old are you? Wait, him or wait, 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 wait. I'm 46. I'm old. He's young. Uh, I'm, not, I'm 24, so I feel like I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm fast approaching you, man. Yeah. It's not a birthday. And you're nine, right? Where are you from? Where do you live? Yeah. Right here in South Carolina? Cool. Welcome. Is this your first time at Darlington? First oh, race. First awesome. race. Awesome. Welcome. You got a good one to come to Very today. Very cool. Um, we, you know, we were chatting a while ago down here. Just kind of just hanging out with the fans and, and, and brought up a great question. It, it's hot. It was 762 degrees yesterday and that didn't count the humidity. We've seen before earlier this year thermometers inside of your Mustang showing 130, 135 degrees. How difficult is it as a race car driver to sit inside of that basically an oven for a couple three hours a time? This, dude, this race is tough. This is, you know, like the race that I had circled on my schedule, my calendar. It's kind of like tough, you know, when I'm training, when I'm working out, it's like, all right, I know you want to quit running, I know you want to quit working out, but there's Darlington, you know, here in a month or two months. And this is the place that, you know, this, this is the place that will give you a reality check and really kind of humble you because you'll think you're in good shape and you strap in that race car. 
and you know, I think it's two things. Number one, it's hot, yeah, it's humid. Even though it was 86 or 87 degrees yesterday, I mean, I was, I mean, I was pretty smoked after practice. Um, and you know, it's just, it's so demanding of a racetrack that not only is it just hot, but you are working your guts out inside that race car. So uh, it just, it just kills you. I mean, in our races, 200 miles, 250 miles, uh, the cup race, I, I mean, I have massive respect for those guys. I mean, they, they're in there and they're in those conditions for a long time. And uh, this is the race where you'll lose, you know, six to eight pounds, no problem, you know, and just be completely drained by the end of the day. So dehydration, I mean, yeah, dehydration is going to be key to watch, staying hydrated. Uh, I went on a run yesterday and, you know, like a typical run for me is four or five miles and I ran two and a half and, and I mean, I was done like crawling back in my bus and uh, looking for water. Went on a run yesterday, typical run, yeah, four or five miles. My exercise yesterday after the race, we went to the bowling alley and drank beer and ate pizza and my exercise consisted of grabbing another slice of pizza, so. I mean, I'm, <laughs> yours sounds smarter than mine, I, I, mine seems like a lot more work. Do we have another question down here? Bashful, is that what we got going on? This is Georgia Bulldog. You guys are confused. Carolina Bulldogs. She's confused. We'll talk slowly to you. <laughs> oh, he's giving you the thumbs down. Carolina they played at NC State uh, Wolfpack today. Go ahead. Who wants to know what the hardest part of your job is? The hardest part of my job. Um, good question. Uh, I think that, you know, with racing, you uh you have a, you know if you say you won five times in a year that'd be a really good year right so yeah yeah that'd be great but that leaves you know what 28 weekends where you didn't win and so you don't win you lose right so just uh as a, as a competitor and someone who grew up just wanting to win every single weekend uh just dealing with that right so dealing with the the tough weekends mentally being tough so that way uh you know you don't let it affect you in other races and, and being able to bid for a championship so just uh, kind of deal, making sure you're mentally tough to deal with kind of the highs and lows um, uh, of the sport. I think it's probably the toughest part. Good answer to a good question, it really is. You get the honor of the last question for Ryan Reed. It's Don't really, mess it up. It's a really easy one. Okay, so you said you lose eight pounds on 135, but it's 135 degrees in there. I was just wondering if you needed a partner. <laughs> you said it was an easy one, but that's. Uh, yeah, no, it's. Uh, I mean, it's it's a lot like if you went and sat in the sauna for two or two and a half hours. It's it's brutal. So it's, uh, man, these uh, these conditions, and it seems like you know the more aero we get these things, it seems like the hotter it gets in there. You know, the teams do a really good job making sure these things are sealed off, and you know they're not leaking air inside the cab of the car and costing us feet. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a warm one. So uh, this today will be uh, a good test, and I think this is a great opportunity for the guys who you know take their fitness seriously, work out a lot, uh, and kind of you know really think of themselves as athletes. Because then by the end of the race, even if your car is not perfect, you might be able to dig in and find a little extra that they can. Well, that's why you're one of the very few in this world that can do this type of thing. If it was easy, all of us could do it. You're a, a world-class athlete. Hey, guys, he's right driving the, the, the Lily Diabetes Ford Mustang today Thank here at Darlington. 200 miles. Go get it today, Ryan. Yes, sir. Thank you guys for coming out. I really appreciate it. Ryan Reed, everybody.